In a unique period from the early 60s to the early 70s, a group of social scientists conducted a series of experiments examining the nature of human behavior and its relationship to social conventions and situations. In this setting, I allow things to be done to me that I wouldn't allow in any other context. The dentist is about to put an electric drill into my mouth. In this setting, I willingly expose my throat to a man with a razor blade. Stanley Milgram, one of the most influential social psychologists of the time, was particularly fascinated with the dangers of group behavior and blind obedience to authority. What is there in human nature that allows an individual to act without any restraints whatsoever so that he can act uh, inhumanely, harshly, severely, and in no way limited by feelings of compassion or conscience? These are questions. We but might. he might be dead in there. The experiment requires that you continue. 330 volts. The experiments that Milgram and others conducted were controversial. And, for ethical reasons, may never be conducted again. Yet, the results of those experiments remain groundbreaking, profoundly revealing about the tensions between the individual and society, and increasingly relevant to contemporary life. In 1962, Stanley Milgram shocked the world with his study on obedience. To test his theories, he invented an electric that would become a window into human cruelty. In ascending order, a row of buttons marked the amount of voltage one person would inflict upon another. Milgram's original motive for the experiment was to understand the unthinkable how the German people could permit the extermination of the Jews. When I learn of incidents such as the massacre of millions of men, women and children perpetrated by the Nazis in World War II, how is it possible, I ask myself, that ordinary people who are courteous and decent in everyday life can act callously, inhumanely, without any limitations of conscience? Now, there are some studies in my discipline, social psychology, that seem to provide a clue to this question. The problem I wanted to study was a little different. It went a little bit further. It was the issue of authority. Under what conditions would a person obey authority who commanded actions that went against conscience? These are exactly the questions that I wanted to investigate at Yale University. It is May 1962. An experiment is being conducted in the Elegant Interaction Laboratory at Yale University. The subjects are 40 males between the ages of 20 and 50 residing in the greater New Haven area. Psychologists have developed several theories to explain how people learn. One theory is that people learn things correctly whenever they get punished for making a mistake. Forty years later, Milgram's infamous experiment, Obedience, is still taught in classrooms around the world. Would you open those and tell me which of you is which, please? Teacher. All right, now the next thing we'll have to do is set the uh, learner up so that he can get some sort of punishment. What inspired Milgram, I would say there were a number of factors. One of them is he was very ambitious. He wanted to make a mark in social psychology. And he wanted, as he wrote to one friend, he wanted to come up with the most, with the boldest experiment that he could think of. Would you roll up your right sleeve, please? This electrode is connected to the shock generator in the next room. And this electrode paste is to provide a good contact to avoid any blister or burn. Do you have any questions now before we go into the next room? About two years ago, I was at the Veterans Hospital in West Haven. Mm -hmm. And while there, they detected a heart condition. There's nothing serious, but as long as I'm having these shocks, uh, how strong are they? How dangerous are they? Well, no, although they may be painful, they're not dangerous. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, no, that's all. All right, teacher, would you take the test and be seated in front of the shock generator, please, in the next room? But the experiment was rigged. The victim was an accomplice of the experiment. The victim, according to plan, provided many wrong answers. His verbal responses were standardized on tape, and each protest was coordinated to a particular voltage level on the shock generator. Now, as teacher, you are seated in front of this impressive-looking instrument, the shock generator. Its essential feature is a line of switches that goes from 15 volts to 450 volts. 
and a set of verbal designations that goes from slight shock to moderate shock, strong shock, very strong shock, intense shock, extreme intensity shock, and finally XXX, danger severe shock. Your job, the experimenter explains to you, is to do a word pair test. If he gets each answer correctly, fine, you move on to the next pair. But if he makes a mistake, you are instructed to give him an electric shock, starting with 15 volts, and you increase the shock one step on each error. Incorrect. You'll now get a shock of 105. Hard hit. Just how far can you go in this thing? As far as is necessary. What do you mean as far as is necessary? Milgram was very much aware that obedience is a necessary ingredient for society to function. But he focused on the darker side of obedience. Incorrect. 150 volts. Sad face. That's all. Get me out of here. I told you I had heart trouble. My heart's starting to bother me now. It's absolutely essential that you continue. You have no other choice, teacher. Oh, I have a lot of choices. My number one choice is that I wouldn't go on if I thought he was being harmed. Now this man makes disobedience seem a very rational and simple deed. Now other subjects respond quite differently to the experimenter's authority. Wrong. It's hair. 75 volts, Jim. Oh. <laughs> Please continue. Some psychologists were troubled by the ethics of it. Many, if not most subjects, found it a highly stressful, conflicted experience. People are stammering, stuttering, laughing hysterically and appropriately. 150 volts. Oh. Experimenter, that's all. Get me out of here. Please quit. Oh, my heart's starting to bother me now. Get me out of here, please. Get me out of here. You have no right to keep me here. Let me out. Let me out of here. Let me out. Continue, please. Let me out of here. My heart's bothering me. Let Go me on. out. Let me out. Responsible for Clearly, you know, when we say people went to the top of the shock board, it wasn't like they were going blithely, sadistically. People went stop and go, stop and go. They were in a state of conflict, which was created a tremendous amount of stress. So that was the main critique. This will be at 3.30. As his voice began to show increasing frustration, uh, so did I. And I was really in a state of uh, real conflict and agitation. One of Stanley Milgram's basic contributions was that you don't ask people what they would do given this hypothetical situation. You put them in the situation. Wrong. I'm up to 180 volts. Please continue, teacher. 180 volts. Oh, I can't stand the pain. Let me out of here. I'm not going to kill that man. Eh? According to Milgram, one of the things that's a prerequisite for carrying out acts that are evil is to shed responsibility from your shoulders and, and hand it over to the person in charge. I mean, who's going to take the responsibility if anything happens to that gentleman? I'm responsible for anything that happens here. Continue, please. Uh, next one, slow. He didn't hold any gun to anybody's head. Just the fact that he conveyed a sense of authority. Roughly 60, 65 percent of the people went all the way to the top of the shock board. 450 volts. That's it. Now continue using the last switch on the board, please. The 450 switch for each wrong answer. Continue, please. I'm not getting no answer. Don't the man's help mean anything? Whether the learner likes it or not, we but must... But he might be dead in there. Milgram made the point, I think, very effectively that the Nazis weren't all a bunch of psychopaths at Belsen and Dachau a death camp from the middle class in New Haven. Well, who was actually pushing the switch? I was, but he kept insisting. I told him no, but he said he got to keep going. What kind of obedience would Milgram get today if he were to do the experiment today? Probably about the same. Probably about the same. Why? I don't know. I think people are just inherently obedient. It just really shows like how far human beings will go to appease what they perceive to be an authority figure. Milgram has identified one of the constants, one of the universals of social behavior. The readiness to obey authority cuts across time. It's a constant. The other outstanding and distinctive thing about the obedience experiment is how much it has and keeps on permeating contemporary culture uh, and thought. It's still with us in very, very important ways.